In this video we'll look at how to use Wingate 8's web access control to authenticate users and then we'll create an exception to our authentication rule for update sites. I'm using version 8.2 which expands upon earlier versions of web access control by adding the ability to assign access rules to different web proxies in Wingate so you can have different rules for your different web servers. A good example of this is when you have a reverse proxy and a web proxy and you need to apply different rules to each. With 8.2 you can also create different block pages for your access rules. We'll have a look at that in another video. Web Access Control offers a simple way to create access rules to control what sites users can access from your network. You can create a flexible web access policy that can provide different levels of access based on user, group membership, IP address, requested sites and schedule. The other use for web access control is when you need to see user details. Wingate can only determine a user's credentials when that user authenticates through Wingate. Adding a rule that requires users to authenticate lets Wingate learn the user details which can then be displayed on the activity panel, the timeline and in the log files. Web Access Control only works on connections through the Wingate web proxy server. We recommend that you use proxy settings in the browsers of the client machines to connect to the Wingate web proxy so that you capture both HTTP and HTTPS connections and prevent problems with sites that require authentication. If you don't make a proxy connection and rely on interception in the web proxy to intercept port 80 traffic, HTTPS requests will not be controlled by your access rules and sites that require authentication may continually prompt for authentication. You can set Internet Explorer to pass Windows credentials to the Wingate servers automatically. This will result in the user authenticating seamlessly and do that in the security settings on the client machines. Web Access Control has three components, categories, access rules and classifiers. Wingate ships with a manual classifier, but there is an optional PureSight classifier plugin available from the Wingate Updates panel. We'll look further into PureSight later. For now we'll start with the access rules. Rules are evaluated from the top down. A request that matches a rule will return that rule's result. If a request doesn't match the top rule, it will fall through to the next rule. If it fails to match any of the rules, it will eventually reach the default rule, at which point it will return the result specified on the default rule. Rules match on four criteria. Who, where, what and when. A request that matches a rule will return the result specified on the rules general tab and you can see the rule result for each rule in the result column. So in this case, if a request does not match the banned rule, it will fall through to the restricted rule, then the allowed rule, until it reaches the default rule, at which point access will be granted. This means that you can use web access rules either as a whitelist or a blacklist. For a whitelist, set the default rule result to deny, then any request that is not specifically allowed by a web access rule will be denied. For a blacklist, set the default rule to allow, and only sites specifically blocked by web access rules will be denied. If a request matches all of the criteria on a rule except the WHO tab, it is a special case and will result in a 407 response from the proxy to the client, which is a request for authentication. We can use that understanding to create a rule now that will force authentication. Remember, my reason for doing this is to discover the user details. If we look at the activity panel now while my client machine is browsing, we see that the user is unknown. To see the user details, I need to force the user to authenticate. So I'll create a new rule and call it force auth. I'm going to set the rule result to the third option, force client to re-authenticate. This result needs to be used carefully so that the client doesn't get stuck in an authentication loop. Select the Who tab and I'm going to change the drop down box to Everyone Except Users Specified Below. From my list of users I'm going to choose the group Authenticated Users. This means that if a user is not already a member of the Authenticated Users group they will match the rule and be forced to re-authenticate. I'm going to apply my rule to all locations on the Where tab, everything on the What tab and always on the When tab. When I click OK I see that the rule has been added to the top of my rules list so it's going to force all connections to be authenticated. 
Bear in mind, this is only one way to get the user details. Any rule that tests for user or group membership will accomplish authentication. Let's have a look at the activity panel now while I make a connection from my test machine. And there's the 407 response, which prompts the client to authenticate. And now we can see that the user details are, are displayed next to the IP address of my client machine. So that's working. And if we look at the hits column for my rule, we can see that the rule has been hit. Well, this rule means that all connections into the WWW proxy server will need to be authenticated. And that's great, but what about Windows updates, which are triggered automatically and will not necessarily have a user present who can enter authentication details? Simple. We can put a rule in above our authentication rule that allows access to those sites without requiring authentication. In fact, Wingate ships with an existing rule called allow that allows access to these update sites. If we look at the rule, we see it allows access, applies to everyone from everywhere and applies to the allowed category and is applied always. This rule takes advantage of categories and classifications. Looking at categories, we can see the default categories that Wingate ships with. And we can use categories on the What tab in our access rules to block access to different categories of sites. The manual classifier also comes with some classifications pre-configured. We'll be using allowed sites for our rule, but you can also see banned sites and restricted sites. It's easy to create more classifications, and we'll look at that in another video too. Looking at the allowed sites classification, we can see that the source is a site, it matches against a data list, the content is allowed sites, and the category is allowed. Editing the classification shows us that we have the option to use a URL instead of a site and text instead of a data list. URLs allow you to specify a specific page whereas site allows you to control access to a whole site. Matching against text allows you to enter your site or URL directly into the classification. Using a data list allows you to manage a list of sites with one classification. Note the category that sites matching this list will be assigned to, and this is the category that is used in the rule. Lists are stored in the data panel. Note the global data and monitoring tab at the bottom of the screen. Here we can see the allowed sites list that our classification refers to. If I open it, I can see that it uses another list inside this list called Windows Update Sites. Note the options to add more list members, link another list to this list, or check against a text file. When I open the Windows Update Sites list, I can see all of the sites that are added to the list. Nesting lists in this manner allows you to keep everything well organized. Going back to the access rule, I will move the rule up the list because I want a request to an update site to be processed before the authentication rule. Now any request to an update site will not have to be authenticated. So we have our access rule set up to allow Windows updates and force authentication, which is a good start. Check out our YouTube channel for how to use web access control to whitelist or blacklist. Thanks for watching.